Hadith 32. No harming nor reciprocating of harm. An Abi Sa'id Sa'di ibn Malik ibn Sinan al Khudriyi radiallahu anhu anna Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal. La darara wa la dirar. Rawahu ibn Majah. Sa'ad ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, relates that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, There should be no harm and no reciprocation of harm. Reported by Ibn Majah. So this hadith is really interesting because it deals with the subject that is central to the mission statement of Islam which is, as many scholars put it, the prevention of harm and the bringing about of benefit. And you can divide this hadith into two specific lessons. One of them is you do not initiate harm. And the second one is that you do not retaliate um, any harm with a harm greater than it. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu la tuharrimu tayyibati ma ahallallahu lakum wa la ta'tadu. Do not transgress the bounds because Allah does not love those who transgress. Now, when, I th when you think about harm and harming others, most of us are pretty good at not harming people in the month of Ramadan, or we try to be. But one of the things that we have to reflect on is um, before even we inflict harm on someone else, usually we're harming ourselves. Meaning we have inflicted a form of harm upon ourselves before we could ever let that reach someone else. Um, and so this is something that we have to think about. Well, how do we harm ourselves? It's not just about initiating harm with others. It's also about how we harm ourselves. And subhanAllah, again, when you think about it, no one harms another person or creature or place without having first accepted a certain level of harm upon themselves. Um, and what's interesting about this concept is that, um, you know, in America, they have something called traffic school, traffic school one and, and um, traffic school two. In traffic school one, they usually go through just the rules of the road. And that's what a person, it's something that they do online. In traffic school too, what they do is, uh, they don't actually examine the rules of the road at all. They don't even look at the rules. They don't look at the halal and the haram, basically. They don't look at what's allowed and what's not allowed. What they do is they examine the attitude of the students in the traffic school. And they say, how do you feel about life? Do you have positive thinking or do you have negative thinking? Um, because they have found that harmful driving or repeated harmful driving is a result from a harmful state of mind. So they examine your attitude. They examine uh, whether or not you want to take risks with your life, whether or not uh, you have a need for adventure that is harmful to others. I mean, they look at your inner state um, and, and they don't really talk about the rules of the road. And so what, when we think about harm and harm upon ourselves in our lives, whether it's harmful habits um, or actions, whatnot, they come from harmful thinking. And the harmful thoughts that people tend to have um, you know, subhanAllah, this is a type of harm that we are supposed to prevent. We are supposed to look into this and prevent it. Why? Because la darar wa la dirar. That we do not initiate harm even against ourselves. So when it comes to um, harmful thinking, there's a lot of different ways that we as Muslims can be harmful to our own selves. In our faith, um, in our progress in life. Um, and some of these things include being really hard on ourselves. And people who are, too, are very hard on themselves and beat themselves up about their mistakes, they tend to be also be very hard on others, not forgiving. Another harmful thinking pattern is the feeling that I can't, even though everyone else can. Um, there are, you know, people ask the question, why me? Something happens to them and they just feel like, you know, unfairly given uh, certain tribulations in life. Um, I give up is another harmful thought or nothing helps, no matter what I do, it's not going to help the situation. That's uh, hopelessness. These are you know, really negative states of mind. There's, uh, the, the other end of that spectrum is more selfish based. So uh, people owe me something, that's a very harmful state of mind, or I'm better than someone else, either spiritually or intellectually, or um, you know, in any given category, just the feeling of superiority, I'm better than. Um, there's also harmful thoughts when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you cannot feel harmfully about yourself or about Allah without it really impacting your life um, in a number of ways. People may feel that Allah is unfair. Uh, they may not say it, but deep down they feel it because they didn't get something. Or they have a negative um, thinking pattern when it comes to be his belief in his punishment. Some people exaggerate him as the punisher to the extent that they don't believe in his mercy. Or they feel like Allah will never forgive me. These are all harm harmful uh, thinking patterns. And I will say this, that this may be one of the hardest uh, hadith for us to apply to ourselves when it comes to thinking because it's so intrinsic to a habit, to a daily habit. 
Um, they say we have thousands of thoughts a day. How many of those thoughts are harmful? I mean, to really, to really rectify that is going to be, um, you know, deliberate work. And to identify our harmful thinking patterns, I want to say ask the people closest to you. Because those who are closest to you already know what they are. Um, either they've heard you beat yourself up, or they, you know, they've heard your self-doubt or insecurities, or they've heard your anger, or they've heard your um, uh, arrogance, maybe. The people closest to you will tell you what your negative thinking patterns are. If it's your husband or your wife, um, your kids, you know, ask them. And usually, it's, they've already told you. By this time in your life, they have, people have already told you what your negative thinking patterns are, and you've resisted it. So take a moment and accept it. Just say, okay, I'm going to identify it, and I'm not going to den deny it, and I'm going to embrace what my negative thinking patterns are. After that, the second point is to research it and read online or in bookstores as much as you can about this issue, whatever harmful negative uh, thinking pattern you have to read. And um, again, this is something that's deliberate. I'm, I'm, this is not like an encouragement to go and put money in a charity box. No, this is something that take this very seriously because all of our actions emanate from our thoughts. Um, and to rectify our thoughts is going to take uh, some time. So research and read online as much as you can about this issue. Um, and the purpose of that is not only just for information, but also to fully get you get yourself to be out of the state of denial and accepting um, of what you of the way that you're behaving. And reading about yourself is important. And the third is to go to a Muslim counselor. And if you cannot find a local Muslim counselor, there is a program online that um, that I recommend. It's ipersonalenrichment.com, and it does deal with negative thinking patterns. So um, when we think about la darar wa la dirar, do not initiate harm and do not retaliate any harm with one that is greater than, than the one that was done to us. Let us now think about this hadith in the context of ourselves. You know, we cannot talk about harming, not harming others until we have come to a point where we refuse to harm ourselves. Um, so inshallah, this Ramadan, uh, make this a point for yourself. Don't harm yourself. Don't you know, say no to negative and harmful thinking patterns. Um, and jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum.